bringing the ancient world to life. She's also a painter, and uh, she likes painterly things. So, um, Bethany, what have you chosen for us today? Um, I'd just like to say that um, before I take what I've chosen, Jeremy's choice is extremely worrying to me because um, you will all know the platonic form theory of love and in the platonic form theory of love we are all one being who is then split and we spend the rest of our lives trying to find our other half which means actually that I should be Jeremy's life partner because now you're talking <laughs> I was going to choose Clee Hill but instead I've chosen Man on Fire so somehow we meet or compliment one another mentally um, uh, I think it, it sort of charts my own personal descent into madness in a way. Um, as Lewis says, I love painting. I love painterly things. I love the very fine and perfect application of paint onto canvas. And that's why I think the Thread Needle Prize is so brilliant, because it brings these kinds of works back into the public domain. But instead of that, I've chosen this great, ugly lump of melted plastic. And, and all, I actually almost chose the other great lump of plastic in the gallery, uh, which is, is it called Displacement? Yep. Have you seen that? It's in the far room, which is this huge sort of outsized laundry bag, which I think is absolutely brilliant because the artist writes about it and says that she's chosen uh, to create this work because it speaks to her of the displacement of communities. And if you go through, I spend a lot of time in um, uh, kind of Central Asia and the Balkans, and that laundry bag is the bag of choice, as I'm sure you know. You see people walking around in the whole times. And you do know that in that bag they have their entire possessions and they are travelling from one place to another. But actually, it seems to me there's a rather kind of brilliant parallel with what we do with laundry bags here in the West, is that we have so much stuff, when we don't know what to do with the so much stuff that we have, we clear it up, put it into laundry bags and store it in the loft. For what? I don't know. So, so I nearly chose the giant laundry bag, but instead I, I happened upon this, as I said, great monstrous thing. Um, and I've chosen it for a very particular reason. Um, the Fred Needle Prize is announced on September the 15th, and September the 15th, as you probably know, is the anniversary of the Battle of Britain. And this year it's the 70th anniversary and will probably be the last year that we have living testimony from some of those pilots. And if you speak to the pilots who are in the Battle of Britain, they say the one thing they always remember about seeing their colleagues fall were their hands reaching out from the plane. And they were often hands that were blackened or on fire. So a very enough, I guess I'm quite emotional talking about it, but I just sort of think this is, I don't know whether the artist intended this, I'm sure he didn't, because he made it a couple of years ago, I think. But this seems to be in 2010, particularly on September the 15th, 2010, to be um, an extraordinary and awful homage to the 498 pilots, British pilots in the back of Britain who died, and the 3,368 pilots from the Luftwaffe who either lost their lives or were taken prisoner. So, so that's why I've chosen it. But then I thought I have to have another reason. I can't, it can't just be a kind of anniversary thing. Um, and I think that this work speaks to me of what civilization is, even though it's ugly and horrible. Because in civilization, what we do as a species, I think, is we raven for more, for what we do not have. And of course, the Greeks told this story as their greatest and oldest myth story, that the one thing that man wanted from the gods was fire. And when he got fire, he allowed himself to create a civilization. Uh, in the Greek myth, of course, we hear about Daedalus and Icarus, Icarus flying to the sun, and then he's burnt and drops horribly into the ground. Um, what I always think is very telling about that myth is that although people always retell it as a rather kind of mawkish description of the love that Daedalus has for Icarus and how sad it is that he's died, actually there's something else going on there. Because Daedalus was the one who made these wings. He, he was the architect of Icarus's death. And yet he gets off scot-free, and if you follow through the myth cycle, Daedalus then ends up moving to Crete um, and enjoying an incredibly happy life as an inventor of robots um, for the Cretan kings. So um, I always think we should remember that when we think of the Daedalus and Icarus story, that it's 
our ideas often cause the death and the pain of others. And it seems to me that this, as I said, rather kind of hideous work, in a way, reminds us of that. So this is the piece of work that I've chosen. It's not my favourite piece of work, but I think it's the work that speaks most of this week in 2010. Um, and I think the fact that the man plays with fire to, to very awful consequences often is something which only happens, it's something which has been circulating in our imagination for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And it's only made flesh either through human folly or through human tragedy or through art. And art has brought it into this gallery. So for a normally incredibly optimistic, positive, cheerful person, I'm so sorry that I've chosen this rather dark piece for you, but I present Man on Fire by Tim Shaw. <laughs> 